All right, so back again live here. This is Kevin Yates. Obviously, I'm not broadcasting on my new page, which is here on Facebook. It's Kevin Yates Live, but I'm broadcasting on my profile page, um, mostly because uh, not everybody knows that I'm over there yet. So um, if you're just tuning into this, if you watch live, or even if you watch like, you know, when this is no longer live, after live, um, you can still go over there. That's where I usually broadcast these videos. Uh, I do them three times a week. Uh, again, search in the, the search bar on Facebook for Kevin Yates Live. Go over there, like the page, follow me there, I and mean, then you'll get notified anytime I post a new video. Um, but, you know, today I just wanted to broadcast this. One, to, to create some awareness over there that I, that I am over there. So if you're just joining in, today's topic is uh, I'm going to share 10 ways to empower yourself and kick ass. That is the thing. Um, Kim, what's going on? How are you? Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> You're the first one here. <laughs> the only one here, I think, right now. So anyway, um, that's what I'm going to be talking about. And I want to share this with you. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I was talking uh, with somebody earlier in the week, and she was going like, um, you know, you never talk about this, this, this other story that I had. I talk a lot about this, it was almost 17 years where I was a personal trainer. I talk about that a lot, and I'm no longer doing that now. Uh, but before then, it was uh, I had spent 10 years, so between 1990 and 2000, working as a grocery clerk. And um, the way, the reason why I'm talking about this today, because this goes hand in hand with the topic that I'm talking about, empowering yourself. Um, I'm a very big believer in that. I'm a very big believer in freedom and, and, and empowerment. And for me, though, the grocery job was like the most disempowering job that uh, I could have had. You know, and this was 10 years that I spent mostly because it was like it was good money. And I just at the time didn't know where the hell I was going in my life. I felt directionless. I had no sense of purpose. I just felt lost all the time uh, and stuck. And so I was just going through a lot of that and just kind of drifting and coasting, you know, and it, it, that was a steady job. But, you know, for me, it was um, the, the big problem was the amount of like control. It was a very um, kind of like corporate type environment. And somebody like me, I, I don't do well with that kind of stuff. Like anything that takes away my freedom, like I, I will fight to the death for my freedom. And I, I just can't. Uh, be in an environment where that gets taken away. So, you know, being told that, you know, I got to dress with a, with a tie. Um, you're, you're not allowed to wear a goatee. You know, uh, my wife, when I got married in 2000, that was like the, the, the final straw, like the tail end, because my wife was working a day job, full-time day job. And so she was off, you know, like five o'clock and then off in the evenings and off on the weekends. Well, that's the time that I had to work. I was working nights and I was working weekends and could never get that time off. And um, I had a lot of uh, bosses who were just like uh, authority abusers, you know, and, and really ran kind of their, their ship with bullying tactics and, um, you know, just a lot of threatening type stuff. And I just couldn't stand that kind of stuff. So for me, it was very disempowering. It, it really was. And that goes hand in hand with today's topic of uh, 10 ways to empower yourself and kick ass. Since then, since I left that job, and I'll tell you a little bit about um, how it all came to be, because the way that I left was the first like real step that I ever took to, to stand up for myself and to really like empower myself. And, um, you know, before then it was just like, I never would have done that. I never would have stood up for myself. I always kind of just cowered down you know, I, I had no confidence in myself, none of it. Uh, so what happened was I went on uh, my honeymoon. My wife and I, you know, got married and I took, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks off. And so when, uh, during the time on our honeymoon, I had uh, started to grow a goatee. And so when I came back, because there was like four people where I worked who had goatees, so no big deal, right? So I come back to work a couple weeks later and my boss just like uh, pulls me out of the check stand and in the office because he noticed I have a goatee and he was telling me um, that goatees were not allowed, you know, at this place. So, you know, most people with this guy, like they, they wouldn't, nobody would ever stand up to him. Uh, and I did, you know, and it just like, I, you know, I had said there was like four other people there with goatees. So 
I, I didn't understand like where that rule came from. And I wasn't coming from a point of trying to be a smart ass or, uh, you know, to be rebellious against authority or anything like that. I was just standing up for myself. And um, he, you know, had said, well, you know, their goatees were fully grown and mine wasn't considered fully grown. And so, we, I mean, it was like the stupidest thing in the world. So I just asked him, can you show me the employee handbook where it, it says that? Because I don't remember ever reading that. And he swore it was in the handbook, but he couldn't produce a handbook for me. So get this, he is the manager of an entire store and they don't have one employee handbook when he hires people all the time, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, and I didn't have a handbook on me. So, you know, we had words back and forth. Uh, it came down into the end where he had said, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a choice. You can either go home. I'm going to send you home. Uh, or you can go down the aisle and get a can of shaving cream, which they were going to charge me for anyway. Go get a bag of razors, which they were going to charge me for. And go in the back and go shave it off and then you can return to work. Now keep in mind too, I, like all my coworkers are there and they see me get pulled into the office and they know something's up. And so I'm at this point where now I'm starting to just like, I'm, I'm seething inside because one, I think that this is just an abuse of authority. Two, he can't provide any kind of proof that there's this rule in the handbook, which I know they're not. There's never been, I worked 10 years in grocery and had been, I worked for, I don't, I don't know how many different stores, but none of them ever had a rule that you can only wear a, a, a fully grown goatee or a half grown one, and whatever the case that was. So I refused to do it because I told him I didn't agree with it and I didn't think that that was an actual rule. So got sent home, uh, but I ended up walking out on that job that day. I walked out on that job. I, I told him what he could do with the job too before I left. I looked at him and told him where he could put that job. But th the reason why I share this is because like I said, this was the first time I really had stood up for myself and um, I really felt empowered at that point. It was that point that like, if I didn't do that, I would have still been stuck in that type of job today. I have no doubt I would have been doing that job. I would have been miserable. And uh, if I didn't commit suicide, um, I, I definitely would have been really depressed, really hopeless and, and just been not living a life that for me would have had any meaning or purpose to it. I, I just would be a shell of who I am right now. Uh, that time that I left, like I, that's what launched me into like my whole personal training and fitness career. Had it not been for that incident happening, I call it the goatee incident, you know, none of that ever would have happened. And, you know, so long story short, you know, that was the empowerment, the first time of like, I really experienced empowerment. And it's a big thing. Like I was saying, uh, you know, for me, you know, my number one value in life is freedom. And I've talked about this on these videos before where, you know, if you want to have freedom, the more freedom that, that you want in your life, uh, it comes from empowerment. You know, if you're not empowering yourself, you're not going to have freedom. It limits that. And so that's what I'm talking about today. Just 10 ways to empower yourself and to kick some ass in your life. So without further ado, I'm going to go right into this. Uh, wrote everything down so I don't forget anything. And that way I don't get off track because when I start going, sometimes I can just ramble on and on and on. Anyway, so Number one is to uh, fire anybody. Fire anybody and everybody who brings you down. And, and that just means like, you know, that, that you, you're, you're, you're influenced. We all are. We're influenced by who we hang around with. And if you hang around with a lot of people who shit all over your dreams, who tell you, you know, you can't do this because whatever. You're not talented enough. You're not educated enough. You don't know the right people or some people who have just never had the courage to go after the shit that they want in their own life and they piss on everybody else's dreams. Those are the people to fire immediately from your life. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got people who mean well, they could be people who are very, very close to you and they mean well, but that kind of negativity can really bring you down. I mean, I remember you know, working, not even, yeah, Kim just, Kim just asked, can I fire a few family members? You might have to, but you kind of, um, I call it like loving them from a distance in a way, you know, it's, it's tough with family, um, because they're family and especially, you know, when you're going to, you have to be around them, you know, they're in your life and, um, they, you know, a lot of times they mean well, 
but you know you have to kind of uh, if it's if it's really bringing you down you know you got one of two ways you, you either have a conversation with them and let them know hey you know like you know, I know you might mean well or whatever, but, um, you know, this is really like uh, um, having a negative influence when you say this to me or, you know, when, when you're making comments like this or something like that. That's a difficult conversation to have sometimes. Sometimes you might need to have it, but other times, yeah, you just got to kind of love them, but love them from a distance, you know. But, um, you know, I had that, like I worked around a lot of people who who were like that and just that type of energy, their attitude all the time, like they didn't, they didn't aspire for much in their own lives. And that kind of energy, it, it, it brought me down all the time. And that was like one of the biggest um, kind of, you know, fires that got lit under my ass to, to get, to keep me going, to get away from them. Because the more I hung around them, the more I, I found like I'd become like them. I started kind of, um, you know, thinking the way that they were thinking and started losing sight of my hopes and dreams in life like that. And it really brought me down. So luckily I just maintained enough awareness to see when that was happening and to go, uh Oh, you know, like it was like red alert. Like I, I got to get out of here because I'm going to become like this. And if I become like this, I'm never going to change my life. I'm never going to do the things that I feel I was put here to do. So fire anybody and everybody uh, from your life. I have like, quote unquote, fired, um, you know, friends, uh, a couple of like best friends that I had for years and years and years. And I just realized like hanging around with them. I love them. I really did. Um, uh, but I couldn't be around them. I couldn't be around that energy. I couldn't be just a around any of that kind of stuff. Cause it was dragging me down and, and I just had to separate myself um, from them. So that's number one. Number two, uh, what do I got here? Uh, spend more time around the people who lift you up, right? So we want to fire anybody who, who brings you down, but spend more time around those people who, who lift you up and bring you up. You know, there, there's always people who are aspiring to do great things in their lives. Um, you know, there's role models that we all have too, that we look up to, you know, spend as much time. If you can't spend it with that person directly, spend it like around how I want to say it, like their, their energy or in a way around them. I, I've got people um, who are nowhere near me who have had big, big influences in me. And, and I don't like talk with them personally, like day to day or anything, but like I'm either on email lists or I watch their videos a lot or, you know, I'll interact with them through like Facebook or whatever. But I'm always like around that kind of environment because that's the kind of stuff that brings me up. It, it keeps me like motivated. It keeps me focusing on, you know, what I'm trying to achieve and what I'm here to do. And, uh, you know, the more of that stuff you got, you know, the, the better it is. So um, definitely spend more time around people who lift you up. Um, number three, spend less time doing the shit that you hate. I'm a big believer that you're never, ever going to create a life you love if you're doing shit that you hate. You never will. There was... Uh, a study, I think it was in Forbes magazine, like 2012 or something, but they did this poll uh, on, on the people who were happy with what they do for a living. And it was like 87 some odd percent of people who, who were polled in there uh, said that they were unhappy with what they did for a living. And this was interesting because this is like only the people, I always think that with these polls, there's, this is only the people who admitted it. Uh, if you ask people, you know, generally, are you happy? Most people are going to say yes, even when they're not. So, you know, I, I tend to think it, it's a lot higher than that, like probably definitely in the 90s. But, you know, point that I'm making is that you know, so many people, mo most people in the world are just so unhappy because they're doing things that they hate every day. They dread getting out of bed in the morning. They hate what they have to do for a living. And they're just kind of existing to pay the bills. They're just living this existence where they're miserable and unhappy uh, just to keep a roof over their head or, you know, they're, they're doing what they what they believe is possible for them. And, and they're they're never like breaking out of that stuff and going after something different. So, you know, if, if you're stuck doing something now that you really don't like doing, you know, it doesn't matter how far down the road of life you've come. It's never too late. Right. It, it is never too late. You know, here I am. I, I didn't make, you know, career changes until, you know, I was, uh, what, 30 years old or so when I started kind of waking up to what I wanted to do. So, 
you know, you don't have to have it all figured out and everything like that. But, you know, at the same time, um, you know, you're never too old. It's never too late, you know, to to start doing the, the stuff that you love. Spend more time doing the shit that you love. Even if you can't do it full time and cut off a job and leave in one shot. Yeah, you probably can't. But there is a way to to start putting that that thing that you love doing or those things you love doing into your life and spend more time doing it. All right, so that's number three. Number four, this is a big, big one. Stop settling for what you think you can get and go after what you want. And that goes with number three, right? But just, you know, I, I it just pains me to see people. I see it all the time. I look out there and I'm walking out there, people with their heads down, people like robots. I remember uh, a job that I had in grocery uh, when I was away in college. And, you know, sitting in the parking lot on my lunch break, feeling depressed, feeling hopeless that I was stuck in this damn job that I hated, feeling like there was no way out. And I would watch people from my car, you know, employees going in and they were starting work and then some were coming out and leaving work. And it was the same thing. It was like every single day, the same thing. It was like this, this uh, movie that replayed itself over and over, a Groundhog Day, right, where they're like freaking zombies. They're just like sleepwalking and they're not even awake to the fact that like they're doing the same damn shit with their life and they're not going anywhere and it's never going to change. It's just, you know, going in one day, coming out the other day, like the same damn routine. And that, that was the first time where like I was looking at that going, damn, you know, that sucks to be like that. But then I started realizing, oh my God, I'm just like that. That's what I'm doing. So what the hell am I criticizing them for when I'm doing the same shit with my life? And that was like the first time that I like I really started waking up to the fact that something needed to change. Uh, you know, I was just settling for getting by. I was settling for what I believed I could do at the time uh, rather than really figuring out what inspired me, what fueled me in my life, you know, what my like my big drive in life was. And um you know, so that that was kind of, you know, one of the big things that, that sparked that in me and got me to start thinking a little bit differently about my life. So uh, stop settling for what you think you could get. Go after what you want. That's number four. Number five is uh, changing your perspective. And what I mean by that is a lot of times uh, when we feel stuck, when we feel hopeless, when we feel down about things, when things aren't going our way, we um, we tend to view things from the same perspective. It's like we're standing in one particular spot and this is our view of life that, that we look through. So it's like if I'm standing here and I'm looking at you from here, this is the only perspective I have is everything I could see from here. Now, if I kind of shift and I move a little bit over here and I start looking this way, you know, and I look around here, I could see a lot more things, right? So... What I'm talking about is like sometimes we have to approach our problems, our challenges, our struggles from a different perspective in order to like see things different. You could see different possibilities. You can come up with different solutions just by changing your uh, perspective. Um, I did that with, uh, you know, this whole thing um, when I started wanting to do like more speaking. I wanted to break out of personal training because I felt really confined in fitness. I, I got tired of being seen as just like this this guy who um, could could only tell you what freaking exercises you needed to do to to get rid of fat off your belly or you know like I was like you know I didn't want my life being about that and I, I couldn't stomach the thought of if I died today what would they write on my tombstone that I that I help people like shrink their belly like you know. I showed people exercises like that just that that to me wasn't what I wanted to be known for. I didn't want to leave just that as my legacy. Um, but the, at the same time, I held myself back from getting out in like I wanted to help people transform their lives. I wanted to go speak on stages. I wanted to like write books. I wanted to, you know, go all around the world and do this kind of stuff and empower people. And I held myself back a lot because I didn't like know how to start doing that. I didn't know how I, how was I gonna market myself or how did I like uh, 
put things on the computer and title things and, and what words did I have to, I got so caught up in all that kind of crap and I allowed that to like overwhelm me and hold me back. So I would kind of shrink back down away from it and then go back into doing the fitness thing because it's what I knew, it's what was comfortable and it, it lessened that fear for me. But then what I did was like, I, I just kept looking from that perspective. And finally, what I, what I ended up doing was I, I, I have something I call a script flip where when something I'm thinking tends to flip itself around and it's not like me trying to go, okay, now I need to start thinking positive or I need to do, you know, it's nothing like that. It just naturally kind of flips itself and it completely changes the perspective. And for me, it was like taking that and going, look, you don't have to have it all figured out right now. Like, you know, Tony Robbins didn't have his shit all figured out when he started speaking and helping people. He just started doing it. So just, you know, taking the first steps and allow all that stuff to figure itself out as you go. And it was that simple. And once like I looked from that perspective, it just like, like this door opened for me. And I, I, and I just started like doing things like making these videos. I started speaking more, you know, out in public and everything like that. And that's where it all started. So, you know, I ended up getting invited to Istanbul, Turkey, uh, you know, years ago out of doing stupid crap like this, who, who would have known? I got paid really good to go fly out. This guy flew me into a four-star hotel. I spoke for uh, two days out there and uh, got that. And I ended up getting a, a, a whole thing with a, a company, uh, you know, a, a major food company, uh, Taylor Farms Pacific, and working with them and, and uh, got this whole thing just, you know, coming off of stuff like that from taking the first step. So, you know, changing your perspective is very interesting. It can open up solutions and ideas for you that you never had before. Sometimes you could do this on your own, but sometimes uh, it's, you know, you just talk with somebody else and, and getting somebody else's perspective can help open yours up as well. So changing your perspective. Um, number five, I think I'm on five or six. I kind of lose track as I go. If you know, let me know. Uh, is any of this resonating with you, by the way? Are, are you getting anything from this? If so, um, either like this, you know, hit the heart or something. Leave a comment below. Let me know if any of this is, is, is connecting with you, if any of this is making sense or you're getting some aha moments for yourself. Uh, let me know, definitely. All right, so the next one is becoming aware of your thoughts and your feelings. This is something that um, I call, I, I, I talked about it in the book I wrote years ago called The Dream Principles, but it's, it's, it's a term I came up with um, and I call it your self-concept. And your self-concept, it's, it's basically your overall idea of who you think you are, how you fit into the world, what your purpose for being here is, like you're just your overall idea of, of yourself. And it consists of two things. Uh, one is your, your self-image. So it's like how you see yourself and the other is your self-talk. That is how you talk to yourself, how you talk about yourself, you know, the, that, that voice that goes on in your head, what it says to you, all that kind of stuff. So being aware of that, I mean, that, that's a huge, huge empowerment tool. And it's a gigantic one. Like for me, it, was, it changed everything. It helped me develop a lot of awareness of the types of thoughts that were going through my head on a regular basis that they were happening automatically and I didn't even know it. And most of them were not empowering. They were keeping me stuck, uh, you know, living a life that I was tremendously depressed about, unhappy about. It kept me overweight. It kept me, yeah, if I could say this right, it kept me overweight. Um, it kept me stuck in a cycle of addiction, alcohol and drugs and painkillers and all this crap that I could not get out of. You know, it, I was struggling really bad with depression and anxiety. And a lot of this stuff was just the, the thoughts that were going through my head, the voice that was going through there, the things I was telling myself and the way that I saw myself. And it's like a story. It's like a book that's been written and, and, and there's a story there with the dialogue and it's like there's a movie there with the self-image and when you live in that shit, that's exactly who you'll become. You know, you'll become exactly what you think of yourself, whether that is like a verbal thing, the things you say to yourself, how you talk about yourself, 
uh, you know, the, that dialogue that you hear going on, all that chatter in your brain that you hear all the time, and how you see yourself. So when you can become aware of what those thoughts are, what those images are, that's where you have the power. Because I said it before, awareness leads to choice. If you don't have awareness, then you don't have a choice in the matter. You're just going to keep doing the way you've been doing things all along. But once you become aware of things, you start to realize that you have choice in the matter. So it's not a matter of having to stop doing anything, stop doing this, or you're wrong about that, or this is bad, this is good. It's none of that stuff. You can just make different choices. You can make choices that empower you rather than go down the road of those choices that disempower you, all right? So that's that one. Uh, where are we at? I'm just going to really, I forget what hell number I'm on. Um, the next one is to raise your expectations. So expect more from yourself. I mean, when you look at it, if you've got like a goal, uh, a dream in life, whatever that is, you, you have to understand that to get somewhere that you've never gone before, it requires you to expect more from yourself. Because, you know, where you're at right now, and this isn't a judgment, I'm not saying it's good, bad, right, wrong, anything like that. It's just taking into account wherever you're at in your life right now. It's largely the result of expectations you've had on yourself, okay? You've done enough of what's been expected of you to be where you're at now. But if you have something bigger you want to go after, another, you know, goal, another dream, ambition, whatever it is, then the expectations that you have have to come up. You've got to raise that shit up and you've got to expect more from yourself because it, it's a bigger requirement to get to somewhere you haven't gone before. It requires growth. It requires you to do shit that you haven't done before. And that means that you've got to expect more from yourself because if you don't, you're going to keep doing the same stuff that you've already done to get where you're already at. The expectations are that, you, that you've been living up to right now have got you right here. You want to get up to here? You've got to raise that shit up. So raise your expectations. Um, next one is to take back your power. This, um, man, this is huge because just, I, I see it and I've, I've done it for years where, and I, I just talked about this earlier and I won't go back into it, but giving your power away, um, we do that. We, we easily do it by playing the blame game. Anytime we start to blame other people for our problems, for the reason why we're stuck, for the reason why we haven't achieved what we want in life. Anytime that we blame other things, if we blame our job, if we blame our bosses, if we blame our circumstances, uh, we play the pity party game. You know, poor me, I'm stuck with this. I never have enough time or I don't have the money or I don't know the people or whatever it is. Anytime we start blaming, we're taking the power that we have and giving it to that which we blame. The problem with doing that is that anytime we give that power away, we lose our power to make anything better. We lose our power to change anything because what we're doing is we're saying, hey, the reason why I'm not here where I wanna be is because it's, it's this person's fault or it's my circumstances or bad luck or God or whatever we wanna blame and that's who we're giving our power to. They hold the power. So unless they change and give your dream to you, you're powerless to change it because you've given all that away. Okay? So you have to be the one to understand to take your power back by stop blaming everyone and everything and look within yourself. Um, thank you, Kim. Thank you very much. Making sense. I'm glad. If this is making sense, perfect. The, you know, one of the first times uh, that I realized all this stuff was... I was watching the movie The Secret, and you know I'm I, I love the movie I really do I mean I think that there's other things that are missing from it, uh, but that for me I remember watching that, and what I came away with from that at first was like, okay so if I attract everything in my life, that means that all this shit that I don't like is my fault, <laughs> I'm attracting it. And I started thinking, oh my God, this is all my fault. I feel bad. I feel horrible. Okay. But then what I ended up coming away with was a script flip that said, okay, if I created all of this shit that I don't like, then I have the power to create what I do like. I can turn this around because I created all. That was a huge eye opener for me. So 
you know, when you could start to, to see things like that, it, it, it's, it, that started for me taking my power back to make things better. And, um, you know, when you could see things like that and you see that all the crap that you're going through, it's not about like blaming yourself and feeling like you're at fault. It's understanding that at some level you've, you've created it, which means that you can change it. You've got the power to do it, but you have to be the one to take the power back. You can't give it away by blaming other people or other things or circumstances or, or, or anything like that. So take that power back and, and you, you got the power to change. All right, so let's see, one more I will go, uh, do what works for you. Do what works for you, not for somebody else. Um, this, is, this is when you've got like people who, you know, it could be a coach, um, it could be just other people who have achieved a level of, of success or they're doing something you wanna be doing and they have their way that they got to the top or that they're doing this thing. Um, I did this with like coaches that I've had who said, okay, you want to do X, Y, Z, you got to do this, A, B, C. And A, B, and C like weren't me. They just weren't me. Maybe A was, but I like B and C just did not work for me. But what I kept trying to do, I kept trying to do these things that were not me. They just weren't working for me. And I kept trying to force that stuff to work when it wasn't me. And I kept butting my head against the wall. And I had to finally realize that, you know, it's okay to just kind of take bits and pieces from role models or coaches or, you know, these people who you look up to or whatever, but you don't have to do every single thing the way that they did it. You can take that which works for you and spin it and fit it to, to work for you, if that makes sense. But do what works for you. If something doesn't feel right for you, and I don't mean like, it doesn't feel right like you're just kind of bullshitting yourself because you don't want to do the work, you know, and, and you're just kind of like, oh, well, that's not for me. I mean, you know, that that it really just doesn't feel right with you. Um, and you have to know yourself really well. And this comes back into awareness. And I talked about that in all my other videos. I talk a lot about awareness. And in the last one, I talked about how you actually can start to develop awareness. I gave like four steps to do that but you really do have to know yourself, but ultimately it comes down to doing that which works for you. Something doesn't work for you just because it worked for somebody else. You don't have to do it their way. Do what fits you, okay? Uh, one more last thing and then I'm gonna be done. You decide what's possible for you. You do it, nobody else does. Um, this has a lot to do with what I was talking about, taking your power back, but you know, a lot of times we get stuck in life thinking we can never do this thing that, that we really, really love and we really want because at some point in our lives, somebody told us we couldn't. Maybe when we were very, very young, there was a family member or uh, there was a teacher or somebody close to us, a friend, whoever, and they may not have meant it deliberately, but it happens at a lot of times in age when we're defenseless against it. You know, and we adopt these things that people say as our own beliefs and we start to believe that they're true. So when somebody tells you, you know, that you'll never be able to achieve this because you're not smart enough or uh, you don't have the talent to do this or you're not like, you know, uh, this person who's, who's speaking like, I wanted to be a speaker and I kept thinking I'll never be able to do that because I'm not like Tony Robbins of all damn things, right? I had the Tony Robbins syndrome, I called it, and, and, and I talked myself down because I wasn't like him. I wasn't as good as him. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. Without for a second thinking of where the hell that belief came from, who ever said I had to be freaking Tony Robbins to speak? If somebody wants Tony Robbins, they're going to hire him, not me. <laughs> when they want Kevin Yates, then guess who they're going to come to? Yes, this one right here. So that's what I'm talking about, though. You, you know, you, you've got to... Um, you know, uh, uh, you, you've got to be the one that decides what is and is not possible for you, not based on what somebody else believes about you, not based upon what, you know, you've inherited a, a, along the years or, you know, th this thing seems like it's true because someone told me that or, you know, whatever. Like you have to be the one that says, look, this has to stop. Where did this belief come from anyway? Who says that I'm not talented enough or who says that I can't measure up to, to this person or whatever and stop comparing yourself to other people because you don't need to be like them. You just need to be you. 
You know, it's not about like being somebody else. Like I said before, if, if somebody wants somebody else, they're gonna go find that person. So be you, be the best you that you can be and, you know, and, and do it your way. But what's possible for you isn't defined by anybody else unless you let it. If you allow it, then it will be, but ultimately you've gotta be the one that says, screw that, I'm gonna define from here on out, whatever I've done, I've done before, but from here on out, I decide what I can and can't do, nobody else, all right? And that is it, uh, I hope I got 10 ways, I lost count halfway through there, but um, that's it, man, that, that, it's, it's, those are some of the ways, and there are more ways and all that, but I'd be doing this for like hours on end, but to empower yourself, that's what this is all about. The more happiness, and, and I believe that happiness is the ultimate. Any goal that we have in our lives, it, we don't want it just because we want a goal. We want it because we want to be happy. That's like the big goal in life we want. If we're going to play this game called life, we might as well play it to win. And winning, winning this game of life is just about being happy. But in order to be happy, we have to have freedom. Freedom is the ticket to happiness. How do we get freedom? Through self-empowerment. If you're not empowering yourself, you're gonna experience less freedom, and when you have less freedom, you have less happiness. That is it. So hopefully, you know, some of this resonated with you, some of it connected with you, you know, even if it's just one thing I said. So if it did, great. Let me know. Um, share this video with somebody you know who needs to hear this. Really, really share this with somebody. Um, and, uh, you know, give me a like or a heart and some love along the way, and that'd be great, too. So hopefully that worked for you. Um, let's see. Kim, real quick, uh, says, thanks, Kevin. Do you have a video on low expectations in life? I haven't done a video on that. Uh, maybe I could do one of those down the road. If there's anything specific around, like, expectations, like a specific area or anything like that that you'd want to know, um, put it in the comment or, or message me or however you want to do it. And then, um, you know, if I, if I get something like that, I can, you know, I, I can get a better idea of what you're looking for with it. And, um, yeah, I could totally do a video on that. So anyway, that's going to be it. So thank you for watching. It is Friday. You guys have a great, great weekend. Uh, I will be back on Monday real quick before I go. Remember to go over to my other page, Kevin Yates Live. It's here on Facebook. Type it in the search bar. Like the page. That's the page where I broadcast these videos from. So if you go over there, like that page, you will get a notification when I go live. I do these videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Times are still yet to be determined. I'm still trying to work with that and see what fits best for uh, most people who are watching. And uh, you know, I'll get that figured out. In the meantime, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever, I'd love to hear it. Comment here, whether it's live or after live, or private message me. Uh, if you have any topic ideas, any questions, whatever, let me know, and I'll try my best to get a video out down the road on that. All right, you guys, have a wonderful weekend. Take care.